normal amateurs what they usually do is just fill in the kicks like this let me just make sure I drum that tempo I'll, I'll just drop it to like 110 to make it real nice and slow and call it a day and what most uh, amateur producers do is that if they hear that they, this kick doesn't sound good they are gonna go and search for kick samples instead of actually tweaking this kick to actually sound good and i'm going to show you how you do that so first and foremost we need to address the length of this kick we might want it uh, we might want it a little bit shorter right so what i can do is, is is i can come here to out and i can just raise this out over here you can see it actually added a fade and shortened our kick So it's much shorter now and then i'm gonna come here to pre-computed effects they are still relevant up until now and if i want to add and boost uh, this sound i can turn on clip and then i can boost now you have that really hard clipped kick that you find usually used uh, in hip-hop and trap music so if you want to make your kick really hard this is what you do you just boost it a little bit if i want to cut off a little bit of the high end i can just drop this cut you see how the wave is changing right there so now i just cut off some top frequencies and all that high end. so i can find a comfortable space here i want to still maintain that top end There we go. And if I want to play around with the kick itself and actually change uh, its tone, I can just move the pogo. If I want to exaggerate this, listen to that. That sounds like a whole different kick already. And another thing you can use to change your kick around is you can come here to your envelope settings and you can turn on your envelope settings. And I do want to have uh, attack. But if you want to maybe change your release, your sustain, or your decay, and if you also maybe want to automate these settings, you can actually automate them. And you can also automate all these settings. That's what's nice about FL Studio. So you create your own kick. So this is the kick that we have now. It's sounding much, much better. So it wasn't that the sample itself was bad, but as a pro producer, you take your time to actually carve the sound that you want. You don't rely on like presets and other sample packs to get you the kick that you want. All these samples are just a starting point, but for your kick to sound different and unique, you need to tweak it yourself. And it takes a few minutes. This is what the professionals do. There's no need to be lazy. Take your time and tweak your kick to sound unique to you so that when people hear it, it won't sound like everybody else's kick. It sounds like your kick. And then next, we're going to move on to the clap. Now, when I move on to the clap, most amateur producers, what they do is that they just drop it in like this. It sounds okay and might actually be okay for most producers, but we can actually improve it to make it better. Now, this is what the professionals do to make their claps sit much better and have a better relationship with their kick. What you can do first and foremost is, again, like with the kick, if you want to change uh, the length of this clap, I can come here to out and maybe I can just pull it up like that. And I can make it a little bit shorter. Now you see as I raise this out, it's fading out at the end. It's not just like doing a hard trim. Now what a hard trim is, I'm going to show you right quick what a hard trim sounds like. A hard trim sounds like this. We don't want that. But if you add a little bit of fade out. It will sound much better. So that's why I like to use the fade out here so that it can fade out. It doesn't just like abruptly cut off. So you can just find your sweet spot of where you think you're comfortable with the fade out. I think that's too much. I can bring it back like somewhere there. 
Now, next, what we want to do is we want to go to our piano roll. Yes, you, you need to go to the piano roll for this next step. And what you want to do is you want to select all your claps because they're hitting right there on the line. So what we want to do is we want to shift these uh, claps to the left. So what we want to do first is you want to come here to this magnet and you want to change the grid to none and zoom in all the way as much as you can. And we want to shift this clap like left over here to the left. So I'm just going to shift once like that. Now let me play it with the, with the kick. That sounds way better. Now this is uh, with just having dropped it here on the channel rack. It sounds okay, but if I shift it one time, it sounds much, much better and it sounds really nice and housey. And you can actually overdo this like if I move it a little bit more. Okay, that's a little bit too early. I can bring it back. That's actually quite okay, but I feel like I'm comfortable with over here. It sounds much better when it's over here. Now, what you can do is you can actually even layer this clap with another clap that has um, like, let's say, uh, a fade in. Like if I go into my claps here. I have this clap over here. I can actually drop it right here and I can put it there and I can come to the piano roll and I can just shift this clap and I'm, I'm in none on my grid and I can start moving this clap. I can drop the volume a little bit. So here's how this clap looks like. You see it has this beginning right here and then it has uh, this attack and then it fades out. So that's the difference between these two claps. So this is how you can create a really nice clap. You can layer it or you can just use the one. So if you're happy with just the one, like just that one, that's totally fine. But if you want to take it a step further, you can actually layer another different kind of clap that has a different shape and that's like a whole different, com uh, like a completely different sound with this one and make something really nice and interesting, just like that. So the key here is to just shift. You don't need to have your clap right here on the line. So shift it left maybe like one time and maybe two times, but you will find uh, the spot that it really sounds much nice. Now, I know that this might seem really weird to do and uh, weird to see everything not being aligned here on the channel rack, but your mind knows it, it sounds better when the clap comes in first and then the kick uh, hits a little bit after so that your kick also keeps its attack because some kicks have like a lot of attack like if I add some attack here it allows it allows the the, the kick at the kicks attack to still be there now let me play this back so your kick and your clap they are not fighting for a uh, frequency space when it comes to their attack points and when it comes to frequencies and then uh, next you can just add your uh, hats i can just add the hat over here like that what you can even do is like add a lot of hats like this and just raise your swing So this is how you can actually make your drums to sound amazing. So take your time, work on your drums. This is what the professionals do. Amateurs just rely on samples to do everything, but you will not 
get this from just dropping samples on the channel rack and expect it to sound good you will spend more time looking for the best sounding samples instead of actually working on the sound that you want so the next video that you can check out is the video that i have here linked which is how to use parallel compression on your drums to make them hit even harder and hit the hardest so check out this video and make sure that you also subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video if you like this video share it with your friends so that you can help other producers anyways I'll see you in my next video I am X and I'm out peace